everybody nice to see you all thank you so much for being here um so i just want to start off by saying thank you as well to all of you who have um donated some money and financially supporting us i'm going to put a link in the chat um for anyone who would like to contribute um, Here it is. Oh, sorry. So, right, shall we begin? Martin, thank yes. you for being here once again to give us your time and your wisdom. And Martin is going to start us off this evening by talking about the relationship between three dimensional space, our inner movement, and our ability to recognize the passage of time. And I'll put that in the chat, just so you've got it in writing. And then, Martin, we are ready. Great, good, thank you. So we've all uh, thought about this before thing, I think. If you've done a course, uh, we will all, all done a little bit uh, about this before. But if we, uh, especially if you're a teacher, you've been a parent, you will know that your small children, say below five years old, have very little idea about time and I've said to you some of you before imagine if you um, you say to your five-year-old I'm just going to the shops and I'll be back in 20 minutes they don't really know what you're talking about they understand something of your intention and your warmth and the fact that you you will return but it's difficult for them to um, manage the idea of the 20 minutes or where mum is going and when she's coming back if you say to an 11 year old, I'm going to the shops, I'll be back in 20 minutes, they have a pretty clear idea of, uh, of your meaning, or a similar idea to you at least. And um, so there's something quite marked about this understanding of um, this uh, short time. Our understanding of time changes also as we get older. 
when I was 20, 10 years seemed an awfully long time. You know, somewhere in the far distance away in the future. But when you're 50, 10 years, you can understand that uh, much more. So, uh, well, what's it got to do with space? Well, sometimes I think um, we, uh, we would take a, imagine a, a smallish child of four or five years old, and it's easy to imagine, when, if we think about it, it's easy to imagine them, you know, living in the moment. Uh, but I don't think it's quite true. They are not living in a present moment as we might aspire to, but they are living in almost no time. There's a sort of disregard for time. They're simply living, and um, time doesn't really come into it. When we have uh, gone through our path downwards to teenage years, through adolescence and developed into adulthood and onwards, then um, we, can, uh, we can be interested in trying to live in the moment and in, the, uh, in this present moment, to be present and to live now. And we have to hold away the space a little in front of us and behind us um, to live now. And so that can be living in the present moment, living in the moment or living in the now. But I think the child, the little child there, four or five years old, is not really living in the now, but in a, a kind of no time, a sort of timeless bubble. And the adults around them are those who are helping them and uh, regulating time and form around them to, uh, uh, to live. And uh, it's, in, it's interesting that uh, I took the ages of, say, five and eleven, and just about in the middle of that time, when the children are about eight, um, in the Waldorf School, the class teacher will deliver a time main lesson. Just as their spirit, soul, physical body uh, is integrating to a point where they start to perceive time, then... Uh, we'll find that the um, uh, the class teacher is trying to uh, touch them with this idea of the passage of time a little more clearly and, and closer to them, bring it a little more to consciousness with candle clocks or the hourglass or uh, creating a, uh, a sundial to learn more about this movement of time and how they are living in this movement of time. Because... It is a movement. We move through time. It's interesting with that we use this word. That we move through time. Now, with that young child, say four years old, um, in Bothmo, you know, we speak about, of course, these six directions of space, which form these three planes, these qualities which we hold in balance as the human being and but they don't really have uh, those six directions um, around them in the same way as we do in the same way as i suggested they don't really have time in a certain way they don't really have space they don't have uh, perspective in the same way that we would do if you stand um, say 30 or 40 meters from a building and you hold your thumb out at arm's length in front of you then the window is about the same size as your thumb so how on earth do you know um, that the window is bigger than your thumb and we know this through perspective and we uh, we have learned this perspective uh, to know that this is a thumb and that's a window uh, but it's just, it, it, I mean, you, I think you can ponder that for a long time. Um, how, do we, how do we really know this? And uh, for a child who hasn't developed this perspective, um, then um, things, are not, things are laid out a little more flat, and it's not quite clear for us, uh, clear for them as it might be for us, because their perspective of the world is not developed well yet. 
Now, in the three planes of space, um, these different qualities develop their own perspective. So, um, in the width of social life, for instance, and the development of relationships, the younger child doesn't really have uh, a relationship with, with the world or with us in the same way that we have. we have. We are here, I stand here, and these are my friends, these are my acquaintances, these are my work colleagues, and um, there is um, a perspective in our social life. These people need to be addressed like this. I should have these kind of manners. I should behave like this with these. There is a, a kind of social perspective. This is how I must speak to these people, or I choose to, or I, um, I find it most constructive to speak to different people in different ways. There is a, a social perspective. And... Um, it has a sort of similarity to the, the depth of view of the thumb and the window, but uh, in this social life. So, and uh, in time, this child is living with, with, um, without a perspective of time, and there is just things going on, and it's a bit flat. Now, as children are growing and they are sort of cooling down towards the earth, I sometimes think of it like in the very early morning in September and the dew starts to form on objects. And um, it, it, it's as if these planes of space and these, di these directions and subsequently the planes of space they sort of uh, can start condensing around the human being, giving possibility as they grow older. So, and throughout Waldorf education, then we are uh, tracing and measuring what we offer the children to enhance these qualities, not to drag them, not to drag this condensation too quickly or to just let it happen by itself but to sort of shoehorn it in and help if it's going a little slow or a little fast or to, uh, to help a child come down through this sort of condensing process. And as these planes develop around them, then they can develop more of this perspective. Now, we come to live, the child is coming to live in this earthly three-dimensional sphere and um, for the sake of uh, our time now let's imagine the child is coming from a place where these three dimensions didn't exist in the same way and they are coming down and condensing slowly into this three-dimensional sphere into the earth now the things I mentioned about social perspective and time perspective, these are things which we have inwardly, an inward perspective. And so I'm suggesting that as the child learns to move and touch and discover this outer three-dimensional world through moving it, and it, touching in it, living through it and gaining competence in it, so they learn this um, uh, perspective and the outer life is affecting the inner life and vice versa of course this is one of our fundamental principles in our movement work and so what is happening is that the child inwardly is developing um, through their experience of outer three-dimensional space, then they are developing an inner three-dimensional space through their experiment and play um, in the outer world. As they grow older, uh, we present them with all manner of things, as physical education teachers, but in all um, subjects, where these three dimensions and the planes between them are tested and, and enhanced. 
and um, we all know that of course in class 7 we would introduce specifically in drawing perspective and it is moved outwardly. We also know that as the teenager is really coming down in class 7, 13, 14 years old the teenager really begins to make their own relationships. They hold, they are held away a little. I'm here and that's over there. And this is in time, but it's also in relationships. And that's why we know. I've said to you some of some time before, a father who I knew well, um, and um, he was half joking and half serious. And he said, uh, what, what have you done to my daughter? He meant you as the school. What have you done to my daughter? I have this delightful girl and look at what she's become. <laughs> And it was only because she was learning and experimenting with perspective um, in her relationships. And this is also going on in time as well. So, please imagine this condensing of these three planes of space. And one of them is to do with time. Another is to do with relationship. And another is, is, is to do with... Uh, we, it comes a, a little later on, but it's to do with this perspective of thinking. So that thoughts aren't all here at once, but we can place thoughts here and we can place thoughts there. The symmetry plane is always a little harder to deal with because to separate one side and the other, because if you look just in our bodies, we're pretty symmetrical left and right. None of us are quite, of course. But we're pretty symmetrical. But as for the horizontal plane, we're very different above and below. And front and back, we're very different front and back. So it's easier to talk about those two planes rather than um, what happens in the balance between left and right. Because of the similarities, it's finer and more subtle. So to imagine time and the passage of it, we have to be able to put one thing in front of the other and one thing behind another. So if we say, ah, in the beginning of July, the politicians have said we're going to be able to meet in groups of up to 50 or whatever it is. And we can imagine where July is and what's going to happen. And we can imagine halfway through June, this is going to happen and so on. And we have a perspective, and you can see this in your mind's eye. You can see it right now. You can imagine halfway through June. And then the end of June. You can see this in your mind's eye. And if we could not space this out, I suggest you would not be able to imagine time. It would all be something in the future somewhere. Now, please imagine where we are in this time of year, in this lovely spring. In the UK, we've had the sunniest uh, May uh, for uh, decades. It's been very nice. Not for the grass, but for us it's been nice. And... So imagine where we are now and uh, imagine June and July be nice and warm. Who knows? Will we be back at school? What will have happened? Or in your lives, where will you be? And then go on to August. Imagine where August is. Maybe you know someone who has a birthday then or perhaps we'll be able to take holidays again. And then September. Perhaps we'll all be back at school in September. Or our children will be back at school and so on. Imagine that time of year. And then October and the leaves are falling. November getting cold again. On to December. Don't, and, oh, in November, don't, don't forget St. Martin's Day. Very important in November. And December, on again. And uh, St. Nicholas, Advent through to Christmas, 12 holy nights. 
and so on into the new year. And the um, days start to get longer. February, March, we see the uh, shoots coming through, daffodils, April to Easter, and May, and we're back to where we started again. So please imagine this year. Imagine your year. Now, um, your year has a copy of a physical shape, like a physical shape, but in your mind's eye, inwardly, it has a shape. Please investigate this. What shape is it? See your year. You may be able to see it several different ways. But see your year. Okay, would any of you please, um, Susan be ready to, or Kevin be ready to unmute whoever puts their hand up. Can any of you say please, just quickly, and there is no wrong in this by the way, people who see it one way are not cleverer than others as far as I know. So uh, please put your hand up and you'll get unmuted and uh, please say, um, what shape is your year? Vicky. Uh, I see it as a big circle um, and, going round and round. And is it? And the summer is at the top and then it goes into autumn and it goes down into winter and mm -hmm. back up in spring. So it's, a, it's an elliptical shape or not. Ah. Yeah, ellipse. ellipse. Is it uh, fatter at the sides or the top? Or the top uh, it is probably fatter at the top and then goes narrower mm -hmm. and then goes out and back in. Mm, so so the, those equinoxes spread out and you have this, you have yeah. the midwinter at the bottom and summer. Good. And uh, which way round do you go? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Oh, at the moment I'm going uh, clockwise clockwise from from my view yes yes, yes. from your yes. side you go clockwise so um march will be on your left uh, summer yes yes yeah. going good okay and is it directly in front of you or is it at a little angle uh oh it is quite close to me. It's quite close. Um, I I think it's it's in front of me. I hadn't yeah. thought of uh, the angle, but the angle, could but be. It's in front. Mm. So, um, a couple of the other others of you, put your hands up, and um, a number of us will get a chance to say. But please notice, um, uh, both of us, but especially Vicky, um, was speaking to us. And um, she was showing with her hand uh, where the year was. So she was looking at the screen here and talking to us and superimposed on that in her mind's eye was this ellipse flat in front of her where she could see her year. She was doing both at the same time. She was seeing it inwardly and speaking to us. It was so strong that she could put her finger on a place where this is midsummer. And she put her finger there. And, and terribly interesting. The next person I saw was uh, Anita. Uh, well, I wanted to say that I I see the year as a, a circle, but I was no, I'm not sure about if I if I go anti-clockwise and and have spring on my left side, and I I think uh, it goes this way round, anti-clockwise, and winter is down 
and um, yeah, so it's a circle and circle and circle and circle. Is it, is it a real circle or is it an, a flattened circle? No, it's like it's a it's a circle. It's not a circle. flattened. It's um it's a circle. It's like um like life is a circle as well mm -hmm. for me, and it's um I don't think it's like uh with a a, a circle. It's not so yeah. exact, but it's yeah. just it's round. Yeah. It's, yeah. It served. That's great. Did <laughs> someone else have their hand up that I didn't see yet? Helena, did you have yours? No. Onella. Onella. Would someone unmute? Oh, there she is. Yes. Can One you hour. hear me? Can you hear yes, me? We can hear. <laughs> For me, it's again a circle. It is flat. The, um, the months have um, static points. They don't move around. I see them um, um, anti-clockwise and I can travel wherever I want. <laughs> so, so I can imagine myself being in November if I want to. And I'm yeah. there in November. <laughs> yes. Uh, is it it's to say what that means again, where that you can be in another place and uh, you can be in November if you want to. How do you do that inwardly? I don't know how to explain that. Sorry, um, <laughs> but, but when... I can travel on the circle. Yes. Anticlockwise or clockwise, but the, um, the months go anticlockwise. Yes. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Somebody else tell us theirs. Kevin. Um, uh, my one is it's going round, it's on the horizontal plane. Yeah. And it's going round this way. It goes behind me. Yeah. And, um, uh, on my right is March or springtime. Yes. In front of me. Um, autumn's over here on my left. Yes. Behind me. Yeah. It goes round like that. And it, go it goes around. Yeah. Uh, the time stays there. Summer's always in front. Yes. It's always behind. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want, if you want to remember last Christmas, you yeah. have to inwardly look behind. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, over there. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's a circle again. Is it circle or ellipse? Um it's so hard to know whether <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I've ever done this before. Um so I think it's a circle. Um yeah, I yeah, I think it's a circle. Yeah. And what what at what level is it? Is it above your head or is it a horizontal bottom level? Where is it? Um I think it's, I think it's kind of uh, around this sort of level. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a heart, hearty level. Yeah. Good. I just want to, was there anybody else bursting to say? Yes. Katie? I'm fascinated that there are so many circles. I don't have a circle. <laughs> yeah, it's good. But for me, it's um, it's it's like I'm standing um, I'm standing here, and in front of me is the year, and I can choose where I'm looking, and sometimes it's closer to me, and then I'm like, oh, that's yeah, November's quite far away. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm more objective, like looking at the kind of big picture. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like blocks. Uh, blocks of time um, yeah. and if I'm if I'm doing so that's kind of the objective view and if I'm doing any kind of like self-development or healing work or memories come up from past or even if I'm projecting into the future 
-hmm. then it becomes more spatial in the sense of I can choose to to look in front or or go to the right if I if I'm viewing it like a line mm -hmm. then I can go to the right I can sort of jump to the right and look backwards yeah um but look down the line to the left or I can jump down to the left and look up to the right um yeah. depending on what I want to see and yeah. then also I can visualize the future being in front of me as like bookshelves and choosing like the the books to read or turning around and choosing like memories from the past to read um which is again spatial uh, more the 3d spatial yeah. but if I'm doing any kind of planning even if it's like my week it tends to come out in block form as a line in front of me. Yeah. And that, that's the thing to do is to, after a year, is to send then, say, a month or, or how do you see your week or your day? And I think that the, the smaller the amount of time, us adults tend to see our diaries. We tend to see uh, our habit of uh, calendars and diaries because we see it so often but the year can often be very individual some people see uh, like lights on a tunnel going past them some people see it in a line going across them and if they want to go somewhere they can pull in this one to look at it and if they want to go to last Christmas they have to look over there and um, you can ask people yourself it's a simple thing and we see time differently. A related thing, but it's not directly to do with time, but it's to do with how we spatially recognize things, how we need an experience of space to recognize something inwardly. Please, please think of the numbers one to ten. And now, see the numbers 1 to 20. One to 50. And one to 100. Add 32 and 12. Now, all these things, you saw them, didn't you? You saw the numbers 1 to 10 to 20 to 50 and 100. And when I said add 32 and 12, didn't you see them? When we do mental arithmetic, generally we don't we don't write it down in our minds, but we imagine the two, and it's a spatial activity. You slot them together, a little bit like Lego. Shouldn't mention Lego, but you sort of slot them together because there was um, there was a two over here, or a five here, and a two there, and you see um, you see these numbers spatially. So, just where numbers are concerned, I think um, there is a, a strong spatial aspect. Now, what I would like you to do, Kevin is going to put you in a breakout room, and I'd like you just to, uh, if you have anything to say, quickly share, please how you're seeing your year, if you have something to say. If you don't have something to say, that's fine. Somebody else in your group will have something to say, I think. But there is no right and wrong here. What we're pursuing is, is there a spatial idea that we need to have inwardly? Are we seeing something three-dimensional inwardly? And we are imagining a child experimenting and growing with their, their ability in the three-dimensional world 
and at the same time then they are uh, starting to understand how to articulate themselves inwardly at the same time as outwardly. So Kevin, would you please put us in some rooms and this won't be long, maybe about eight minutes or something like that to do a quick bit of sharing and then we'll come back. Would you like four people per room? Four sounds good. Yeah. Okay. But don't just... put all the talkative ones together. I've just done it randomly. <laughs> okay. Or, <laughs> yeah, I've just done it. I've asked the computer to do it randomly. Okay, right. so you need to accept the invitation. So I'm going to open the rooms in a second and you need, there's a button that should come up and you need to accept the invitation. And if you've got any problems, um, you, I think you can call for me and I'll zip around and help you if you've got any problems. Great. Um, okay, thanks, Kevin. Do you have a rough time you'd like to do it for? Say eight minutes. Eight minutes and then I'll, I'll give you one minute's warning. Okay. Yes, that would be great. You've all been invited now. But please blast us with, your, with what it was. Tell us. Does anybody see mountain ranges or <laughs> something going around them or straight lines or roads? Anything is, anything is right, you know. It's just interesting. Put your hand up, Susan. Susan. Yeah, so um, I'll share. So my year is um, like a tunnel and it's around the heart level and it goes out in front of me. This is the future and the tunnel behind is the past. And as Martin was talking about um, October, November, December, the tunnel was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I could imagine that the spring comes and the summer comes and it's a bigger tunnel. Um, so it expands and shrinks with the seasons, but it's it's in front the future. Mm. Great, lovely, good. This is a nice antidote to all those circles we were getting. Yeah, circles are not wrong. Jackie, please. Hi. Yeah, mine was um, well, mine wasn't a circle. I I kind of imagined. Um, the best way I can decide is like the ancestor walk. I was I was stood at the front and behind me was this sort of line which sort of wiggled away behind me. Mm -hmm. So I could see it. Um, it didn't wasn't a straight line I had to move and look at. It's if I moved, the line moved and I could go back into the past and the spring, the summer, the winter, the autumn. But the um uh, I was stood I can stand very clear here. Mm -hmm. and this sort of just spreads right out in front and that's that <laughs> and, when you, and when you want to know about something you inwardly turn around or do you bring it forward i think i bring it forward actually yeah to have a look at something it can come it's, it's, it can travel through yeah great yena you had your hand up to tell us something Oh, I, I didn't do it on purpose. I'm sorry. Oh, you were just waving at us. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> no. There were was, there was some other hands. Yes, yes. Helena. Um, well, mine isn't all that interesting. Mine looked like a cake. But I want to nominate somebody um, who was in my group to please show us hers. And that is Livia. Livia, please. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Again. Yes, please. Okay. Where? Where? Yeah. So each. So where are you now? In the middle. Okay, please stand where you were with your side to us and in with your hands show us where are you now and then where where is the middle of the summer uh, so spring, spring summer, rest, summer and autumn, autumn going down and winter. winter. Good. Spring, and it's wonderful. Spring, summer, 
Autumn, winter. And how wide is it? Just the width of your arms now? Or is it wider? Mennyire széles? Nem nem túlságosan igen. Nem ilyen. It's more narrow, narrower. A little narrower here. Yeah. That's great. Wonderful. Amazing. You wave along. Beautiful. Any others surprise us? Yes, Helen. Well, I don't like it very much when you gave us that image because I stand on top of like a big mouse wheel or a big mill wheel yes that's again just a bit wider than my body probably yeah. twice as wide as my body and i'm always at the top yes and i and the, and i walk ra- as i walk round the yes. wheel stays at the top but the months yes. change yes so if i have to imagine going forward i actually have to go over the top and it's a bit scary Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and if I imagine going back, I have to actually, interestingly, it's not as scary. I have to lean back and walk back, which yeah. I find interesting that I don't find that scary. But the going forward isn't very pleasant. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Any others? Any others? Yes, Hannah. Could we unmute Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, in a way, I had, it, uh, uh, I had a twofold in a way. My, my first instant one was um, uh, almost the concept of uh, a perfect circle, very quite like how Vicky was describing it uh, without the ellipse uh, mm-hmm. on the side. Mm-hmm. But when I was uh, myself immersing in it a little bit more, it felt more like a, uh, actually in a sense, a little bit like heaven. It became a little bit flatter, also going round, but more like a spiral. So each time it would be a summer, it would each time be in front of me, but it would be. Um, in a sense, at the same level, but the previous summer would have gone more down. So mm-hmm. almost like a, a corkscrew. Yeah. Um, so that would go, the more you screw, the, 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 the spirally thing would, would go deeper and deeper. Yeah. That's how I... Amazing. So it was, yeah, corkscrewing. Um, yeah. Clockwise. Um, and then um, I have uh, also uh, a question whilst I was pondering, um, mm-hmm. because when I think of uh, when I uh, when I do movement, I, I see future is always uh, ahead of me and uh, in front. But sometimes, if I'm thinking about it, it, would be more on a continuum as well. So it it changes really. Mm-hmm. So and for most of us, it's going from left to right. And I was wondering whether that would be uh, a concept because we are all in our Western society, we would write from left to right. Yes. And I wondered uh, whether in uh, Arabic cultures where they would write from right to left, if yes. their future would, if they would see this to the left. Yeah. I don't know, there was a question that suddenly it came up. It would be interesting. Yes, we are, we are trained from early on. Mm. Is, uh, maybe is, Helena, do you write Arabic, Helena? 
I, I do, but it wasn't my first language. Mm -hmm. I only learned Arabic when I was seven, so I'm not representative. Yeah. So, um, I would like you to uh, consider this idea. So, we see um, inwardly, or we articulate inwardly, this passage of time and placing things in time. And it's all, we almost have a visual perspective of time. We all do it in different ways. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? Us human beings, you know, we speak to each other, we say the same words, but we're picturing something quite different. So if I say to you, well, um, at the end of August, and all of us do something different inwardly, to find and gain perspective of that place in time. So um, we see time and this is how we are able um, to understand the passage of it and the placing of events in time, things that have happened and things which are expected or predicted. The child doesn't have this perspective, this inner perspective. Their inner life is on the outside. They don't really have an inner life. Their inner life is on the outside. This is why children are so transparent to us. Whereas a, a teenager, for instance, is not very transparent and us to each other are opaque nearly. It's very difficult to know what's going on in someone someone's mind and another adult and this um, inner life on the outside is slowly formed and trickles inwards and the inner life slowly slowly uh, gains a space inwardly and I would suggest that how the children are led to move along with who they are when they came and the talents that they brought with them and how they are led um, to experience and to reach into the world helps them to articulate uh, their inner life generally I would suggest but we can see with our little experiment here we can see that uh, we articulate our appreciation of time inwardly spatially and this is uh, what I was uh, wanting to suggest in this uh, in this evening does anybody have one last uh, comment suggestion addition I'm always very happy by the way to get feedback. If you ever want to email me or say something that it, it's not so easy to say here or if you want to collect your thoughts to write something I, um, I'm not dismissive if someone writes to me I'm happy to receive things. Yes Helena I, I just wondered, um, in, in, in line with um, when Rudolf Steiner talks about um, how we get our ideas of things and being truthful how we get our ideas, like he mentions the dislike of the color yellow being because you might have once had a teacher that you didn't like that wore a coat of that color. Yeah. Um, how our years our perception of a year might be dependent on how we first learned about the year. Was it an image in a book or was it a Eurythmy experience yes. in a China school? Yes. Or was it just a drawing? And yes. is there a relevance, would you say? I am sure. I am sure. Because the, the experience of three-dimensional space as you grow is not only what you move outwardly, 
but your inner life is constantly affected by movement you see around you. You will know, because you're a school teacher, that you will see children um, moving like cartoons because that movement which they have seen has become part of their inner life and becomes into their movement. So we are affected by all manner of things and uh, uh, even a, yes, a drawing, a beautiful drawing, a painting, a, uh, a lovely teacher who led you through, so we're, we are, our inner life is spatially affected by those things too. Um, but I believe we will be strongly affected by um, um, by the sort of ground the sort of groundwork of um, articulation in the three-dimensional world so that things that your teacher might say you'll see in a book would, would sort of stick because they have some congruency to what you've experienced before so of course I'm biased but I really believe in the power of movement actual movement uh, in three-dimensional space hmm. okay uh, we ought to finish and and thank you very very much for um, calling in it's great and it's lovely to see your faces because we're not all from UK and it's lovely to see you and um, in a certain way these computers have a wonderfulness that we can all meet from different places so thank you very much for coming Susan or Kevin do you want to say something before we go yeah I would just like to echo what you said Martin it's so nice to see so many people here and um, see all your faces and um, hear your descriptions about time I love I love this one from Livia yes. um, and I think it's something that I might do now is just to ask a few of my friends um, how they picture time and um, do a little survey to see what comes up mm -hmm. and um, Kevin's written um, that he'd like a slice of Helena's time cake um, we might all want a bit of that too so um, I'm going to unmute everyone just so we can say bye to each other and uh, so nice to see you all Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Bye. 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 Bye.